Artists, creatives, and designers, welcome to Dream Aloud Art, the podcast where creatives are educated on seeing value in themselves and their creations. Presented to you by RTA, respecttheartist.com. I'm your host, fellow creative and friend, Electra B. Frederick. Let's go. Three reasons why people <laughs> won't pay you for your art. Yeah, I'm, I'm giggling. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. I am. Number one, it's important for you to realize that I'm an artist, okay? So my style of art has evolved over the years. So for 20 plus years, I was really locked in on the idea that I would flourish the strongest as a visual artist, all right? And so I have worked with (laughs) every medium under the sun, every medium, almost every medium that exists, uh, except maybe doing some body painting or tattoos or something, right? But I have done ceramics, photography, uh, two and three dimensional design, sculpture, uh, Ooh, graphic design, illustration, um, calligraphy, uh, graffiti. Anyway, you get the point. But I'm laughing because, yes, I have that history of visual arts. However, it has evolved into what you're listening to now. And that is uh, art in the sense of communication, speaking, um, and I love that. And maybe that's more fitting for my life now and the experience that I've had in so many different ways, whether that was selling art, uh, presenting my art, uh, trying to air quotes, blow up on social media, which I succeeded. I've gone viral. I've had, you know, the infamous celebrity reposts on the earlier days of social media. And so those that was a really big deal back then. I know a lot of celebrities do that now. But back in my day, some of y'all know, some of y'all know, it was like, <laughs> it was like the equivalent of a recording artist getting signed on. Like if a celebrity used your, your art, like it's like, what? Such a big deal, right? Going back to, <laughs> going back to what I was saying about giggling is because this question about people paying for your art and the question of why don't they want to pay, why this, why that, how come people trip whenever I'm talking about money? As an artist, why do people either try to talk my price down or uh, size me up or try to, you know, or give me like a side eye, like, why are you, why are you even talking about money? Like I have consulted so many artists and I'll give y'all, I'll give y'all, um, of course the three, three reasons, three big reasons why people won't pay you and what you can do about that. But I'll also give you some information about consultation and what I can do to help you possibly. Okay. Cause I, I always, I give this buffer because sometimes artists want that. They want that quick hit, you know, like, uh, give me, give me three words that will completely fix my entire situation. And it doesn't always work like that. It deserves a conversation and it, and then that's what a consultation is not only a conversation, but to look at your, the entire scope of your situation and tell you what you need to do to fix it. And I have consulted so many artists over the years, so many, so many. And I have talked to thousands of artists. Oh, and so I have heard, seen so many situations. And of course, as I noted, my own situations. Um, And I know a lot of solutions, very, very easy, very easy solutions. The question is, Will you take on that solution? Will you even consider it? Or is it something out of your little comfy, cozy, uh, flannel printed uh, zone that you don't want to get out of? Okay, because that's the thing. You know it is, right? Is it that? Is it that that's holding you back? And most of the time it is. 
most of the time it is. It's all in your head. Uh, and you're just used to playing a song to a particular tune. And then you freak out when I tell you, you have to, you have to change the tune. And it's like, but why? Uh, because if you want uh, results, they gonna do, you're going to do something different. You're going to do something different and you're going to feel it. All right. So let's, let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Cause I know you want to, you want to know three reasons. <laughs> You want to know like 30 reasons, some of y'all, why won't these people pay me? Why, why the hell ain't got no money? Because you, you're dealing with the wrong one. You're dealing with the wrong one. Like, okay. All right. Let me stop. <laughs> let me get back into my formal voice here. Okay. I'm keeping it real with y'all. All right. Like I have, I have taught uh, classes for speaking engagements. I've done courses, you know, at universities, like, Listen, most of the time, y'all want whatever you want in your head and you you don't even think you need to change anything you're doing. And then you get big mad when you don't get your, your results in 2.5 seconds. All right, I'm going, I'm, okay, let me chill. Because I'm thinking of situations right now and sometimes I just get wired. I'm like, oh my gosh, that one artist that I was talking to, oh my gosh, so resistant. Like... <laughs> Okay, let me behave. Did I even give my, I didn't even give my introduction, did I? I didn't. I'll, I'll give a quick one and then we can dive into My name is Electra B. Frederick. Okay, welcome to Dream Aloud Art. All right, I love y'all. Thanks so much. I appreciate you following and subscribing on whatever platform uh, you're on. Thank you so much. And make sure that you go to respecttheartist.com because that is who this podcast is presented by RTA stands for respect the artist y'all okay here we go so the first reason why people won't pay you for your art is because you have never sold it you never sold it you you never have you never have now this to some of y'all who are more seasoned um you already that that's like very obvious like well okay um, yeah, why would an artist trip if someone doesn't want to pay them and, they, and they've never sold their work before? Trust me, thousands of artists don't even consider the fact that they've never sold it at all. And when they finally begin requesting for a payment or having that conversation, they get, you know, of course, a negative response. And then they, then the artist gets upset at them. Wrong. Okay. That's, 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 that is the incorrect way to view this situation. The healthy way to view this situation is to find, go to a place of understanding. Go to a place of understanding. You have to understand that you've never sold your artwork before. You've never done that. And now that you have made the decision to start, you know, getting more postured, taking your work more seriously, uh, considering um, transitioning from a full-time job to being a uh, full-time artist, I know what that life is like. I've consulted on that. I've lived that. I've experienced that. And there's a healthy way to do that. But why would, I mean, put yourself in their shoes too. If, if. You're dealing with someone who has never, let's just say you're dealing with the cookie lady down the street, okay? She sells cookies, or excuse me, she bakes cookies all the time. Every time you go to the mailbox, right, y'all chat it up, y'all have a conversation, and she gives you cookies. She's never asked for anything before. She's never sold it, okay? (laughs) One day, y'all are chatting it up. And then, you know, you're kind of, you know, you, you've been, it's a Pavlov's, Pavlov's theory, something like that, right? The dog will, the dog is used to being fed. I'm not reducing people to dogs. I'm just using an example. A dog is used to being fed or they hear a bell and then they're fed for some food. So every time they hear the bell, uh, their behavior is to expect the food, right? So you go to the mailbox one day, you're chatting it up. And in your head, you're like, okay, the cookie's about to come any any day now, like any, or excuse me, any moment now, any moment, any moment, no cookies, right? She's just having a conversation. So then you, you ask, like, hey, you know, what happened? You know, you, you, you fixed some cookies. 
Right? You give her like that little eyebrow raise, you know, because your your stomach is calling too. Your stomach is like, you know, what happened? What happened? You like, you, you look like you. And she tells you, well, they're $5 now. Yeah, you're going to feel like, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> As some of y'all, it depends on what kind of cookies we talking about here. You, some of y'all probably wouldn't even care, but I know how how some of y'all are cookie addicts. You cookie addicts. That's that's all it is. You're just hooked. But I've had plenty of experiences like that, especially when I was doing uh, graphic illustrations and I was selling them online through Instagram. Okay, I was dishing out free work all the time, and the reason. And I'm gonna keep it real with you. <laughs> I'm going to keep it so, so real with you. I just wanted attention. Most of the time, I just wanted people to want what I got. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Y'all are carrying that fire power around, right? You're like, yeah, I got that fire. That's right. I'm the only one who can make this art look like this. And I know y'all want it. I know you do. You want some? Oh, here you go. It's free. You you want some? Let me show you what I could do. You're showing off. You just want that attention. And then I started putting a price on it and I held my price too. When when my mind is made up, oh, it's made up. Like it's made up that there's no, I'm not going to negotiate with you. It is what it is. Now, excuse me, that that's back then. I can have my mind made up now about certain things. And depending on the situation, I can work with someone. I can negotiate with them depending on the situation, right? This is not a, an everyday thing. But anyway, back then, yeah, I put a price on it and I was like, okay, I'm holding it. I'm keeping it. But it's different. That's all I'm saying, y'all. It's different. And most of the time when artists get really frustrated about someone not willing to pay, listen, it's okay. Like if they don't want to pay you the price that you've put on your work now, it's all good. Number one, as I just mentioned, is the first reason, right? They're not used to that because you've never sold it before, okay? So you have to just let them learn. This is the training period now. This is the grace period, the training period where you're now training them to understand that if they want the goods, then they got to come with the funds. That's that's all there is to it. All right. So there's your solution. Okay. You got the first reason is that you never sold it. You never sold your art before. The solution is to train them. Now you do. Now you sell your art. Now it's a thing. That's it. Now, now it's a thing. Okay. And they just have to understand that it's a thing. So the second reason is they have never known an artist who sells art. Like that's not even in their world. Like they've never had a conversation about it. They've never had any exposure. And this is a real thing. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. You know, I mean, if you're a plumber and you deal in plumbing and you work at Lowe's and you you deal with outdoor construction stuff, like I clearly you see this is not my forte. You deal with drywall and, you know, concrete slabs and, oh, you know, all those other things that are very interesting to other people, but not me. Um at least not right now, if I had a good conversation with someone who knows what they're talking about and someone who's really passionate about it, then maybe that passionate energy will just rub off on me. But right now, like that's not a thing. So that person could be all in that world and they don't know anything about art. They don't know nothing about it. They've never, you know, like it's just not in their vocabulary. Again, you have to have compassion and understanding and realize that Sometimes people just don't, that's like, it's not a conversation for them. I say this, again, I I told y'all, I've talked to a lot of artists. I've consulted a lot of artists. I have dealt with a lot of situations, both personally and professionally. Sometimes people just don't, as artists, okay? Sometimes the creatives don't have much room for compassion and understanding. Sometimes, okay? Sometimes. They don't, they, they are not putting themselves in that person's position and saying, hey, you know what? It's all good. If you, you, maybe they've never dealt with this before, or maybe 
you know, they just don't know any different. I mean, you don't know everything either. How about that? How about, <clears throat> let's, let's put a little light on that, right? Because I'm thinking about some conversations I've had, thinking about some, some consultations, right? It's like, bruh, do you, do, do, I'm sorry, do you know everything? <laughs> I mean, like, am I, did I miss something here? Did, do you know everything? So you got to have some compassion. Some people just don't know that people sell art. Like it's art is a whole world, right? Or being creative is a whole world in itself. And, and, and in every particular form of expression. It's its own world. Music, you know, instrumental kind of music, right? Dancing, ballet. It's an entire universe in itself, right? So the second reason why people won't pay you for your art is because they've never known an artist who sells art. The solution, it's kind of like the first solution, right? You have to educate people now. Train them, educate them, find reason, understanding, and compassion. It also It also boils down to finding common ground. And even if that individual is not willing to pay you for your art right now, maybe there's still a way that they can show support, that they can be on your email list. You know, anything that keeps the connection with people, keeps the relationship. You know, don't shut somebody down because they can't afford something. How would you like that if you were shut down completely every single time because you couldn't afford something? Listen, you could go to a a Mercedes Benz uh, dealer, dealership, right? You may not be able to actually afford the car, but you want to take it on a test drive. I've done it. I've done it before. I went on the test drives, right? You may not be able to afford it, but guess what? They're going to try to, you know, hey, you want to stay on, hey, on her email list. Can, you know, they want to keep that connection because maybe one day you might just be able to pay for that joint in cash. Why? Like, why would they vote you off the island completely? So don't do not do that to other people, right? Treat people the way you want to be treated. I See, this is taking me to my customer service days when I was teaching customer service. I'm still teaching customer service to y'all. And everything I do, like, I am tying it in, number one, to your idea of your own value, right? Because that's what we do here on this podcast. I'm educating you and encouraging you to see value in yourself and your creations, so it all goes to your your idea of self-worth because pricing is a big one, right? For your idea of your own self-worth and keeping that relationship healthy with others, right? So you de- you're developing a healthy relationship with yourself and you're playing well with others, right? So let's go ahead to the third reason why people won't pay you for your art, because you do not inform us that it's for sale. You like, you don't even, how are we supposed to know it's for sale? So prime example, because this is something I, I coach artists on is Instagram strategy, right? So Instagram is a very wonderful platform for free real estate on the internet, if you will, right? And they give you all of the bells and whistles to present your work, to sell your work, give you a little shop, all of that, right? But we, we want it all. Our design give us all access to all kinds of tools and all kinds of filters and all kinds of buttons and stickers and gifts and pins. Like we want all of that, right? So the situation that I've come across with artists, uh, with the artists I've dealt with, is that <laughs> on their page, they have all these pictures of all this artwork, but there's nothing that lets us know it's actually for sale. Like it's not, there's, it's not in their bio. It's not in the caption of any of the posts. Nothing communicates for sale, like nothing. So what happens is that an artist will, you know, uh, let's just say uh, they're, they're drawing. Typically people don't, uh, the general public, I'll just say, the general public may not understand that your artwork is for sale. And especially if your presentation looks very informal. In other words, if I have a drawing on paper, 
and I take a picture of it and it looks very informal, looks kind of like, you know, I just took a quick one with a smudgy lens on my iPhone camera, like click, and then I post it like that doesn't feel like you're intentionally presenting a masterpiece here. That just feels like you just took a quick pick up, you're drawn and threw it online. Like, so, <laughs> so <laughs> excuse me. All right. <clears throat> So the majority of your posts look very informal. Looks kind of like you just threw it together. So if I approach you and I'm like, hey, can I get a drawing? Like notice in my question, I don't even, I don't even sound like I'm, you know, all that serious, but whatever. Uh, So I just say, hey, can I get a quick drawing? And you're like, sure, it's $300. And it's like, what? Like, bruh I just looked at your page like your page feels like free like (laughs) you know what I'm saying like this is a real this is a real thing you don't inform us that your artwork is for sale so the solution would be to consistently inform us that it's for sale so whether it's in your bio and I mean of course that's just Instagram as an example your bio your website I don't care if it's your Facebook page, any means, any way that you're communicating that you are a visual artist in this case, um, any way that you're communicating you're a visual artist, you should also have information available that stating that it's for sale. It, this is my, you know, uh, this is my painting, you know, have a, a title or whatever, you, however you're presenting the uh, physical work in itself and then have a price behind it. Don't, be scared. Don't be scared. I have to say that. I have to say that because there are so many artists who are scared. Again, this goes back to your idea of your own self-worth, which that's another episode. I'm not going to, you know, pricing. Pricing is something that I give consultation on also. Okay. But there's so many artists that are very nervous. They're scared that they're going to be judged. They're scared that they're going to lose friends. They're scared that um, the price they have in their head isn't really what it's worth. So they're they're basically just questioning their own self-worth. So it, it doesn't matter if if I call off a price to you right now and it sounds like a low price. Uh, I mean, I've I've known artists that think $50 is way too much for 20 hours of work. Honestly, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. You know, the mentality just has not understood. They they have not conceptualized their value to say $50 isn't that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, or they have not, they don't put value with their time and they'll spend a hundred hours on something and, and say, well, I'll sell it for $20. You know, I mean, if if that fits your budget and your lifestyle, go for it. But I personally don't think that makes it doesn't. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. That's all I'm going to say. It's not healthy. Um, That's my own perspective. So that's the third. (laughs) I got to give all these disclaimers with everything I say. So that's the third reason why people won't pay you for your art is that you do not inform them. You don't inform us that it's for sale. The solution is that you tell us the price, and you let us know it's for, it's for sale. And if it's not for sale, tell us too. But you know what? I have so many, there are wonderful ways to uh, market your work and look for, stay tuned for that podcast um, because I'm going to, I'm going to open up that can of worms there, how to market your work and price psychology. Uh, I would love to dive further into that. So Those were the three reasons why people won't pay you for your art. Number one, you've never sold it before, right? Number two, they've never known artists who even sell art. Like they they just don't, it's just not in their vocabulary, but that's where you come in because now you're going to introduce them to something new. And the third reason is you don't inform us. That is for sale. You just don't. So big solution for all of those is to start communicating that your artwork is for sale. Start communicating and do it consistently. This is not like, let me put it in the caption on a a post and then I ain't going to say nothing about it and I want to revisit that. You better, you better work. You better work. What you mean? (laughs) 
I need for you to do that on a consistent basis. Come on now. Come on, somebody. Somebody in the back of the room just hollered. Exactly. All right, y'all. So I had mentioned earlier, of course, I do consultations. I can't promise you that I'm going to have a, a slot available for you if you do want a consultation um, having to do with artist confidence, having to do with pricing your art, or having to do with Instagram strategy, because those are my three areas of expertise. But if you do need a consultation, it's in the show notes, my email, which is electra at respecttheartist.com. Listen, come through. I will flip your entire perspective on your work, on your idea of your own value and your worth. Come on, somebody. Yes, y'all, this is my subject. I'm just getting wired up. Maybe me want to go to an art museum right now. I just want to go to an art museum, go to art gallery, like something. All right. So I hope you got a lot out of this. Man, there's so much more to say, uh, but stay tuned. Once again, I appreciate y'all. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you just even tuning in, just listening and following, subscribing all on whichever platform you're on, whether that's Google, uh, Google Podcasts or Apple or Spotify. Listen, Back when I when I did a podcast, they didn't have all that. <laughs> like y'all know, if you listen to the first episode, I had shared that I used to have a podcast, um, and the podcast lasted all like three whole weeks or so. I don't know, uh, but it didn't last too long. <laughs> but they didn't have all these eighteen thousand different platforms, which is great. I'm so glad that they do have multiple platforms. But I do appreciate y'all so 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 much and. Yeah, I look forward to, you know, hopefully seeing y'all, seeing y'all in some of the cities. If you want me to come speak to your artists, your artist tribe, your students, come to the university. Like, I love that. I love coming to your city. Uh, if you want me to be in your city, then you can, of course, email at electra at respecttheartist.com. Or you can email the team email, which is team at respecttheartist.com dot com and that's artists like plural respect the artists okay respect the artists <laughs> okay i love y'all god bless you peace be with you and i'll catch y'all on the next episode much love Artists, creatives, and designers, it has been an honor and a pleasure to spend this time with you. I'm grateful for your encouragement, love, respect, and support. Follow this podcast and share this episode with another creative who needs to hear it. Your positive ratings and reviews are highly appreciated. Screen capture this episode, post it, and tag me on Instagram at dreamaloudart so I can show the love in return. For more information on having an artist consultation with me or for being on the YouTube show for artist interviews, check the description on this episode or go to respecttheartist.com. That's R-E-S-P-E-C-T-T-H-E-A-R-T-I-S-T-S.com. Much love to y'all. And remember, RTA stands for Respect the Artists. I'll catch y'all on the next episode. Peace, peace from here to the Far East.